What's up guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a comparison between the MacBook Pro 16-inch 2019, late 2019, I'm looking at it right here. It's the one I've been using to do all my work. Yes, my daughter is with me. She's not in school today. She's gonna to help me with this video. She might say a few words here or there. But today, the whole point of this video is the 2019 MacBook Pro has been my editing station for three years now. It only has, I'm gonna give you the specs, go ahead and get that out the way of this 2019 MacBook Pro. It's a 16 inch screen, keyboard, has 16 gigabytes of RAM. That was my downfall. It has a Core i7, it has a four gigabyte AMD Radeon Pro 5300 megabyte, only four gigabytes. The eight definitely would have been nice. Uh, that was another downfall. I have 512 gigabytes of storage, so that's pretty much the specs of this MacBook Pro. It's been a great machine the three years I've used it, but since I've been doing a lot of TV shows, it has been lagging and it takes forever to do proxies and all that stuff. So I definitely had to upgrade. So I did upgrade to a Mac Studio, the new Mac Studio that just came out. This video, as you've seen in the title, is gonna be the Mac Studio against the MacBook Pro because a lot of these YouTubers, they're doing comparisons against the Mac Studio M1 Max and the Mac Studio M1 Ultra. They're comparing those two and they're not comparing the older computers that most people are coming from. Not everybody is coming from a very good MacBook or a Mac computer. They're coming from something a little older and they were waiting for something that they needed and this something they needed finally came out like the Mac Studio and now I want to see the difference. So in this video, I'm going to show you everything when it comes to how the MacBook Pro 16-inch 2019 edits all the way from playing footage, scrubbing, and then export. With the Mac Studio, I'm going to do all the same stuff. I'm going to use the same projects so everything's the same, the export times and all of that, it will have the same bit depth. All the settings will be the, exactly the same for each computer. And whenever I record it, I'm gonna have a clock in front of it so you can see the exact times of each one of these renders or exports. I will not do a screen record because of all the processing and GPU power of these computers, I want to be used for what we're doing. So I will have a camera shooting over my shoulder so you guys can see what is going on. So with that, um, that was kind of a long intro. Say hello to my daughter down in the comments. Um, I've been working so much, it's crazy. We haven't really been able to hang out, but anyways, we're hanging out now, shooting this video. This is a video I wanted to do. Before I get into the video, I didn't even tell you the specs of the Mac Studio. I got the M1 Max 10 core, 36 core GPU with 64 gigabytes of RAM. So that's the specs I got with the Mac Studio. So now finally with that, let's get into the video. Okay, so now that I have everything set up, both projects are on both computers. Um, the first computer I'm gonna do is the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Um, as you see, there's a camera here. You could see my screen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is render. I'm gonna render the timeline and I'm gonna time that. Um, usually when I edit these TV shows, I edit off of a server, which I have over here to my right. And the servers are 100 megabits both ways. So I usually either make proxies or I render the timeline. Usually I make proxies, but the rendering will show how fast this is compared to this one. I'm just gonna do the full timeline. This is an edited show, it's completely done. So with that, let's get into this sped up footage. And after that, I will show you how much time it took for the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Okay, so as you've seen, that took 36 minutes and 38 seconds. Long time, I think, for a 22 minute timeline. But you know, it got the job done, it's not terrible. Um, like I said, this is an edited project. There's color grade on it. Everything is already there. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to do the same thing for the render for the Mac Studio. Okay, so as you see, it's nighttime now. This is all artificial light. Uh, my wife's actually in the background. You can't really see her, but it took a long time, mainly because I had baseball practice with my daughter, all that good stuff. 
But as you see, the MacBook Pro is a lot slower than the Mac Studio. That's obviously the reason why I did the upgrade. It took 36 minutes, I think 36, 37 to render with the MacBook Pro 16 inch 2019. With the Mac Studio, it took, I think, 14 minutes to render. So it's a huge difference. I think it's over, it's way over 50% faster. When it comes to export times, the Mac Studio exported in 14 minutes, which was way faster than what the MacBook Pro did, which was 33 minutes. Honestly, when this MacBook Pro was hooked up to all these screens right here, now that the Mac Studio is hooked up to, this MacBook Pro used to be hooked up to all this as well, it would take 50 to an hour to export that same video. A 22 minute TV show, it would take you know 50 minutes to an hour to export it. I don't know if all those screens kind of took resources from the computer, I'm not really sure, but it would always take that long. So it actually did a lot better than what it used to do by doing it in 33 minutes. Still way slower than the Mac Studio, but a lot faster than what it used to do. Now that it only has to run one screen, I think for sure that has something to do with it. Okay, so another thing I wanna go over, the reason why I did a 22 minute export and a 22 minute render is because these computers, usually when I'm working on them, I know a lot of YouTubers, they do like a five minute export, a five minute render which it does show the speed of the computer, but it don't show the speed sustained for a long period of time. Because most of the time when I'm editing, it's usually 22 minutes or 44 minutes if it's an hour episode. And usually it's gonna be exporting for 10 minutes no matter what. And the MacBook Pro 16 inch, it usually drops to one gigahertz on all the cores. So really it's like thermal throttled and it just, the fans are killing it, but it's really at a slow clock speed. So it's really good to test it longer than five minutes. Um, with the Mac Studio, as you see, the fans only go to 9% and it's literally the CPU and the GPU is maxed out and it's just, they don't overheat. It's never thermal throttling. The whole render, the whole export, it just is chugging along, chopping through the footage, no problem. Same thing whenever I'm without rendering, whenever I'm playing Canon C70 footage, 10-bit or 12-bit raw, hit the play button. It will use the CPU and the GPU to about 85 to 100%, but you have no drop frames. The fan will go up a couple percent, but that's about it. So it's always good to do a long export and a long render. But either way, the Mac Studio, uh, the M1, 36 core GPU with 64 gigabytes of RAM was definitely worth the upgrade. Scrubbing through footage is way faster. Playback with the C70 is literally hit the space bar, no drop frames. When it comes to the MacBook Pro 16 inch 2019 computer, I couldn't scrub through footage unless it was rendered. And whenever I hit the space bar to play Canon C70 footage, it would not play at all unless it was proxies or unless it was rendered. So with that, that's all I have to say about this video. The Mac Studio with the M1, I think it's $2,700 with the version that I got. is definitely worth the upgrade over the MacBook Pro 16 inch. I swear, if I had a dollar every time I said MacBook Pro 16 inch, I would have about 20 bucks. So yeah, with that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video.